All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to Smurf Week, <laughs> the toughest uh, week of the year for RTA, of the year, of the season. Um, basically, what happens is all the players who are capable of getting maybe G1, G2, G3, um, but haven't been playing most of the season, when the timer ticks on, they're like, oh, I'll just go casually get that G1, G2, G3, because they're capable of doing it. Their account has the runes, it has the monsters. Uh, and then they can do it. And so what they do is they just charge through the ranks, destroying everybody along their way. And it feels really sad because you're like, man, how am I getting beat by these people that I would be cleaning up on normally? And it's not your fault. It's runes. It's monsters. It's just that, you know, if they had played all season, they might be in G3. Um, but because they're just playing now, they're in C3 killing you in G1. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience and maybe some things I can do to improve, and hopefully that'll help you uh, during Smurf Week and then going into the next season. So let's see here. I, unfortunately, I played some, uh, what do you call it, Goodwill Battles, and it kind of messed up my replays, which is not great. Um, but you can see my high water mark for the season was 1913, which, let's see where I fell out of it. That's what we want to look at here. Right here. So... I needed to get to, I think I was about two wins away from a probable G1, which I would say is 1927. Um, I'd say anything over 1930 is very, very likely. And so I was like, okay, I need to net two wins. I've been winning at a 60 plus percent clip for the season. Um, so netting two wins isn't the hardest thing in the world, but I made the mistake of playing on the weekend of Smurf Week, uh, which is, I think, even harder than normal Smurf Week. So that weekend is when these people just fly through the ranks. So... I recorded my stats because my goal is to learn from this experience and try to get better in the future. Last season, I was lucky. I had enough points going into the final two weeks. I didn't have to play at all. I was just chilling at the 1941 or something like that. And so I just hung out and I only had to play my maintenance match and that was it. Um, so I didn't have to experience this. This season, I'm going to have to fight back through um, falling down and we'll see. G1 is not locked in. It is up in the air. Um... The closer I get to the cutoff, I think the easier it gets because the people that are charging through are either satisfied where they're at, they lock in their G1 and they're fine, or they lose interest and they fall out and then they're done. And then the most, mostly people who are playing are people on the border. Um, people who have it locked in are just hanging out. So you're playing a lot of G3, or, uh, C3, G1 border people, which I think is kind of where my account should be, right on the border. Um, so I played seven matches so far this week. I went two and five. So I'm negative three for the week, and I needed to be plus two. So now I got to go plus five to uh, lock it in, which isn't impossible, but it's a little bit of a tougher sell um, than otherwise. Because as soon as I fall into C3, I got to play a lot of overpowered C3 people, and I'll lose to them. They'll win against me, and it's not that they're C3 quality. They might be G2 quality. They're just playing, you know, 40 matches to get to G1. Um, so I wanted to show you my matches and my plan. Basically, what this week has revealed to me is that I have a more serious problem with AoE control than I thought. Um, I've been usually about 50-50 against AoE control, and it's my hardest matchup. But um, these seven matches, I don't think... Did I win a single one? I did not win a single AoE control match. I won two bruiser matches, and that's where I think I excel. So AoE control is a serious issue. So we're just going to look through those matches real quick. Here's the first one. Um... First pick Verd, which is always, always, almost always a Swift Verd. The Swift Verd is the linchpin to this combo because if you don't ban the Verd, any combination of these four monsters, given enough turns via Verd, can beat almost anything. So that's what this comp wants. Now, how do I evaluate this? So I'm showing speed in the Masha Yonhong, even though my Yonhong is on violent, so it's not super speedy. Um, they went double speed lead because they were threatened by the Yonhong. Um, and then I pivoted into turn two with these two obvious turn two units. And then what was, I think, is the issue in my uh, AoE control counter comp is that then I give them their whole team of five without any worry of it being disrupted. Like, I don't disrupt them in the picks. My counterplay is not good enough to disrupt them in the gameplay. And it's, as soon as this draft is lined up, me versus them, um, my odds of winning are really quite low. So let's take a look at the replay real quick. Let's see here. This is where I fell out right here. And I think... In seasons past, my turn two might be able to turn it around after a couple rounds of turns, but this season, I don't think that's really the case. They ban the Leo. They basically have to. The Leo against the Joe Gun is a great counter. So we get the shield up. He's still got tons of strips, so it doesn't matter. Traps that. And so now he doesn't have a lot of uh, 
worries for his glance. He resets my Yonhong, goes again, as per usual, resets everybody, and now I'm really on the back foot here. It's 3v4, I'm stunned up, I have no skills, and I have no bar. Um, and then here goes him. I mean, I'm getting kind of lucky against the Oliver. Like, the Oliver is not going infinite, you know? I get a glance on him, I'm like, okay, I got the Molly up, but look how, look how far behind I am. Like, just the health versus his health, and he's just cruising. He's just blowing past me in terms of speed. I mean, even this Oliver, Oliver's not really a problem. I mean, there are games where Oliver, I could have the game won and Oliver goes infinite and I lose. That's not this game. I'm sort of trying to bring it back around, missing some of the glances, but that's not unusual because I don't have a ton of uh, accuracy, right? Like, it's probably a 50-50. So I really like that I got a turn there with Diane. I'm feeling pretty good here. I get the kill. We're four on three, but he's AoE and I'm not. And I'm pretty low. Miss the slow. See, that's that's in my favor. Like, this is all feeling pretty good for me. He just starts doing crazy damage. Crazy AoE damage. Look at that. Now I'm down a unit. Now I'm down two units. And then it just turned, right? I'm halfway down to Ma Masha. Um, just didn't quite have enough gas. And I don't think... I think it was a pick problem. And I think what I've learned over the course of this week, I don't know if I can correct it this season, is that I need to, I need to have something in place to compete for turn one. Currently... My plan is just play turn two against turn one, hope for the best. That's not going to cut it, you know? Um, all right, so let's see here. Here's that one. Here's the next one. I lost like four in a row. I was not happy. <laughs> I was not happy at all. This is Gany Hathor, and this is just someone with, uh, I would think, just better runes. Because they're playing a low percentage win comp, um, and I think just, they just have better runes, if I had to guess. So let's watch this one. I mean, it's such a simple way to win. I was watching, and I was like, huh. I remember when people used to win that way. It's just take turn one, get a setup, start murdering. I mean, we've got the uh, Hathor Guardian skin here, which is a couple seasons ago. Cools it down. There's another issue here in my my will unit, uh, the units I have on will. So, like, look, just easy. Defense break, kill. Done. I'm done. Like, he's got Ganny Hathor. And really, I think this might be uh, a bit of an issue on my pick ban, because now I'm Ganny Hathor for forever, right? I thought I could be impactful enough turn one by banning the Chiwu, but instead the Chiwu is his worst unit, and I banned his worst unit, and let through tons of damage and tons of control. So I think that one's on me. I don't know if it's ruined so much as that one's just poor planning on my part. And the thing that really gets me is that sometimes you get into these ruts where your ability to plan out how the match is going to play decreases, and then you start losing, and you're not sure why, because you can't accurately identify what's going to happen. So I sort of thought, okay, I got to start competing with turn one. What do I do against these turn one picks, whether it's Oliver or Vert or whatever? And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the more out of that comp because they almost all want the more. And then I still think the Masha is really good against the uh, the Oliver. But then here, they went Yonhong uh, Monkey, which I did not expect because I would love to get Yonhong. And so I pivoted into turn two. I've seen a lot of Carnal against Oliver work. Um, and then Diana, I think, is pretty good against this three. So I felt good about that. Um, and then he went Gianna Chungpung, and I finished with Han. So let's take a look at that match. Han's tricky, because if you get him a turn or two, he'll murder. But if he gets controlled, he's done. Like, control is his biggest weakness. So I banned out the Oliver. Eh, it's debatable. I don't know if that was the correct choice. That might be another uh, misplay on my part, because I do have double fire and Diana, which are all kind of soft Oliver uh, counters. I need to respect the Chung Pung a little bit more in uh, control comps, because the defense break and the glance can just completely devastate you. The Gina, uh, Gianna's a problem. The... Monkey is a bit of a problem against my fire units, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I think the Chung Pung's the issue. I, if I remember correctly, this uh, Gianna just goes insane. So we missed the defense break, which is understandable. That unit's going to have a lot of resistance. He's going into the Diana, which... I don't know. I don't know that Diana taking a turn is as scary as just nuking down my fire units. I probably would have gone for the Mosh if I was him. But then he's got the Glance. He's got the defense break from the Chung Pung. And that's some great damage on that Yonhong. Probably uh, crit damage. And that Yonhong's not getting touched a lot in gameplay to be able to do that much damage, which makes sense. He's playing a unit, a, a team where things aren't getting touched. And look, I'm bombed up. I'm getting cycled on big time. I'm controlled. I'm cooled down. And I'm just a sitting duck. Like, my Carnal never did anything, you know? That was just turn one gameplay at its finest. Like, just getting it done, you know? Like, I'm just so far behind so quickly because he gets it all done on his very first turn. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a, a rune issue, like that monkey skin, um, the siege skin on the Chung Pung. But doesn't matter if it's a rune issue on my part. It's still a loss, you know? Like, the the reasoning behind how you lose is not as important as if you're trying to climb, you got to climb. Um, so let's see here. We lose another one here. This one, I think, is an issue on my part. I think I banned the Riley 
and then I just got um, Molong uh, Bulwarked pretty quick. Even though I didn't have any buffs, I was like, oh, I don't have any buffs, I'll be fine. But just a little bit behind on the Bruiser. I think losing a Bruiser comp like this is a is a real problem for me, especially having double wind into triple water. That's that's an issue. That's a big issue for me. I think that's a pick ban issue. I think let him have the heals, break up his his damage, and then hope that my wind units can get in. But it didn't. It didn't work. Um, here's one I actually won, and I think some of these were skin of my teeth. Let's take a look here. Only won the two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying because what's nice about the ranks nowadays is that C3 is so wide that you have so much time to try. Like there's no reason to hold C3. Like C3 is so giant that safe C3 is massive. Um, so the only reason to not try for G1 if you're on the border is you run out of time or wings or desire to play. So I'm definitely gonna give it give it a try over the next four days, and I could make it. I mean, if I go plus two a day for four days, I'm fine. I'm still in G1 as long as I tread water. Um, but it's a lot of matchups, it's a lot of decision making, and some RNG. So he grabs the turn one with the Barbara, which I'm seeing more and more of. I'm just getting Joe gunned a lot too. I'm seeing a lot of Joe gun, but this is a win, so apparently it works out. Got the double stun, but on the Juno is very nice. <laughs> I'll take that. Shield up, just trying to get a little HP with the shield. Nicely done there. And I'm really liking the... Uh, I feel like I've got this unit countered, whatever the name is. Oh, Poseidon, not Poseidon, uh, I don't know. Light Poseidon, because I've got the Juno. I can just sit on Juno's skill too. Uh, and I've got the Diana and the Yonong. So I've got lots of options. So really, I just got to kill the Barbara and then go from there. Barbara's the damage. And the defense break. So we're doing a little bit of control there. Just trying to hang in there, Yonhong, hang in there. Nice stun for me. He gets the Yonhong down, but I still feel pretty good here. I'm in a pretty good spot because I've got some of his stuff countered and you know that Jogun is uh, squishy because it was so fast. If things are that crazy fast, um, the trade-off is effective HP. So we get the Jogun down. We know the Diana hard counters that thing, so we just gotta wait. So he finally does his cleanse buffs and we're ready to respond. We haven't wasted any of our um, strips. So we're still in a pretty good spot. So we get that done, which is basically a done deal. Get the stun, which is just salt in the wound, and we're just gonna power through that. So we, this is how we win. This is actually a pretty good win. Um, his team was a little weird. It's sometimes weird playing with that pod toast because the protection has to be good for it to matter. If the protection isn't good for the duration of the match, um, pod toast is not good. So sometimes people overly aggressive, they're a little over aggressive on picking him. Um, see in the, the second round of picks and it allows you to really counter with uh, buff removal and I don't think he had enough gas by leaving that in, not enough gas there um, and I was smart enough to ban the Chung Pung this time so I got rid of his main uh, damage or a defense break and stuff like that so won that one then we lost this one here against a C3 which is not what you want to do if you want to try to get points but again he was right on the border and beautiful AOE control on his part beautiful beautiful and I'm trying some new things here I'm trying to mix in the segment a little bit still want that molly to be good but in his version where he went dots and bombs molly's not good <laughs> that's a great last pick against what I'm showing like the dots and the bombs super effective against the Diana the molly um the Leo sort of a desperation play I think he actually left in the Leo which was smart on his part but bad for me which to me means maybe the Leo wasn't the best pick. Hey, ban the Molly, ban my sustain. He's like, I will get through all your mess because you can't sustain it and I'm banking that I can sustain better than you. I control the Rika for a good little while, but Rika, you can only control so long because she'll start proccing. Great damage with the stun there. I felt pretty confident going into this match and then this is what killed me. He left in the uh, Leo, but he just controlled it with the Joe gun. Like, doesn't really matter what I put in that spot because he knows that after a turn or two, he can totally control it. And then he's got me on the ropes here. I think this all over might go off a little bit. Let's see. Great damage with the stun there. Nice proc for me. I, when I saw that proc, I was like, oh, I'm in good shape. But I've got a bit of an issue on killing these fire units, so i got to make sure I can get it done somehow. That was a big problem on my part. Not getting the full turn cycle there. Getting uh, messed up by the fire unit. That's what killed me. Over-aggressive uh, play on the Diana. Lost me so much of Diana's effective HP um, that it put him way ahead. I mean, look at the bars, look at the bars. Like he's ahead in so many ways. By the time I get the, this disruption in, it's trouble. Like now it's four on three. And as soon as he hits that Diana, it's four on two for as long as he needs. And then I'm in big trouble. So I think, I think that was more on me than on him. I think I could have done that better. So, you know, if I can play a little better to finish up the, uh, the season, I might be in good shape. So here's another win. I think, yeah, this is my final win. Um, this is just, I'm pretty sure this one is just blind luck. Let's take a look. I'm pretty sure. I remember one of them just being like, wow, I did not deserve that, but I will take it. Is this the Wusa game? I think it is. Yeah, the Wusa. So looking at the teams, 
Um, he's got his combo with the Molong Wusa. He's got massive damage with the uh, Dominic. And then the Robo is really, really good against my Diana in particular. I mean, if my Han starts procking, it's good against Han, but Han cycles without procking, so it's not a hard counter, but it's a great counter to the Diana. Um, would Antares be better? Maybe, maybe, probably. Um, I don't know. It just depends. I don't think he needs the strip and the pushback, which is what the Robo provides. I think just raw damage would do him better. So I think Antares might be a little bit of a better pick there, but let's take a look. It being off will makes sense because it's great as a Gianna counter, but if it's on will, then it doesn't counter anything. Did what it's supposed to do there, pretty much. Surprised he didn't go for the kill there, but never mind. Dominic can handle that just fine. <laughs> Dominic can do great damage. Trying to get some damage done on this Robo to make my uh, Diana good if I can. Nice stun there. And if you proc, the stun is 100%, so all you need is accuracy, and it'll get done with pretty high consistency. Again, Dominic doing work. I'm like, how am I going to make this work? Because look at that nice stun there. Still working on the robo. And since I've committed to Nana, um, I have no choice but to go for stuff that's low. Like, splitting damage with a Nana is not a good idea. The only strength in Nana is that she buys you a little more time, so you can't split damage. So we get one more stack there. Great. That buys me another shot here. Gets a proc. Oh, God. It doesn't matter. The proc just murders me. So this is a problem. This is a huge problem. I got to kill this Dominic. The Dominic is doing 50% damage every, every turn it takes, and I don't have a lot of control. Um, so I got to get it killed. Stun, we'll take it. That's great news. I love the Diana against these water units. If I can keep it good, I just can't. I can't get hit like when I'm defense broken. So I gotta, I gotta, gotta move. Gotta get out of this. So we're going all in on this Dominic. Finally get it down. Wish we had the Nana there. If it wasn't for his proc, we would. Um, but eh, that was very, very lucky to be able to defense break and get a. It wasn't a proc. It was because he's she swift. Um, it's just I lapped it. So that's cool. He took a little bit of his own life. I can get him down. I can get the defense break out of the way and maybe be okay. I need this Diana to be good. Masha just doing things. Oh, the two turn sleep. I was not. I was not happy when that happened. Oh, I could have had so so much more. That little bitty chance from that uh, that Wusa got it done. But then, I mean, it works out. We know this is a win, so we just skin of our teeth it. Cause Masha's got. She's got some uh, some ability. She's so fast versus him because she's powered up her, her speed, right? So she's just booking it. Like when he's at low, when he's low bar, I get two turns for his every one turn. And when if I can sneak in the defense break like I did, massive damage, right? So that's what I'm going for there. As long as I can stay on the beast, I'm in good shape. And the fact that I'm lapping means I'm getting my, my skills quite a bit. So we're finally off the beast, but get it done with a nice crit there. So, But I mean, that was not a <laughs> very inspiring uh, win. So here's where we're at. More matches than last season. Where we finished last season in terms of percentage, and we still got like four or five days left, so we have to play. Um, this thing's going to climb like crazy. So we're just going to see how it goes. We're going to try it. We're going to think about turn one, but I don't think I'm going to actually go all in on turn one um, until next season. I need to build a turn one team um, with intention. Like these these are well built, I think. Like this looks pretty good to me. Um, what are my other turn units? This guy I've not gotten to work yet, so I need to work with him for the full season. Uh, Chung Pong, I think looks pretty good. 279 on Despair. You know, it's close to there. I need this unit to work somehow because having Han is such an advantage and being able to glance uh, my opponent and strip is really, really nice. So I need to get this unit incorporated somehow next turn or next uh, season. This is a really poor person's Gianna. Like it just exploits the Han's uh, leader skill. So that's where I'm at. A few days left. We're going to show you how this went. And it's not all, you know, it's not all wins. You know, like people are like, Oh, you know, you only show when you're doing well. Like, this was a rough week for me. You know, I went down from two wins away from solid to debatable if I'll make it. I don't know if I'll make it, so we'll see. Um, but anyway, I hope that kind of thought process and breakdown, don't don't just, uh, don't give in to you have no control over the situation and rage, you know? Like, th there is a reason why it's so hard right now. It's not that you're bad. It's not that RNG is killing you. It's that there are players who are so much better than everyone else that if they tried, they could be G3, but because they're past that trying stage, like most people in arena, um, they just casually go get G1 for one skin and they tear through the ranks and they look like they're not good, but they're really, really, really good. <laughs> like really good. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave it here. I uh, hope it was helpful, helpful for you guys. Everybody looking for a specific rank, good luck. And I will catch you in the next video. Take care guys.